If a dart is thrown and hits somewhere in the diagram below, what is the probability that it hits the shaded area? And in the end, we want to write our final answer as a decimal rounded to four decimal places. First of all, note that the probability of hitting a region is proportional to the area of that region in the whole diagram. So it's really going to come down to calculating the area of the entire region, the entire diagram, versus that of the blue shaded area. Let's start off with the area of the entire region. Just forget about the internal parts of it. The entire region is basically an 8 by 4 rectangle. And as we all know, the area of a rectangle is simply length times width. So the area of the entire region is easy. It's 32. Now let's go for the area of the blue shaded region. And what I would say is ignore some of these other lines, but realize that the area of the blue shaded region is really a combination of two rectangles added together. So I just have to calculate two rectangular areas and add them together. But before I can do that, I need to realize, too, that this rectangle here has a height of 1, and it wasn't written in, but the reason I know it was 1 is because it's 1 from here to here, and it's 2 from here to here, so that must be 1 from there to there. So I do need that extra piece of information, but that's easy enough to put in. And also the same thing with the with the lower measurement. If I know that there's that it's two inches from here to here, and it's four inches from here to here, then of course it must be two inches from here to here, because two plus two gives me the four. So I've just added in the extra numbers that complete the picture that I need in order to calculate the areas. So what I have again going back to the first rectangle is a 2 by 1 rectangle, and the area is 2 times 1. For the second, the bigger rectangle, it's actually 2 by 2, which makes it actually a square. And once I calculate those two products and add them together, I'll have the area of the blue region. Of course, 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 plus 4 is 6. So that tells me if the area of the blue region is 6. And by the basic probability principle and actually this little note, I know that the area of the shaded region over the area of the entire region gives me the probability of hitting the shaded area. That's what the note says. Well, we just calculated the area of the blue region to be 6, the area of the entire region to be 32. So all is really left to do, if you wanted to leave it as a fraction, is to divide both numerator and denominator by 2, and you get 3 sixteenths. So if we were leaving the answer as a fraction, it would be 3 sixteenths. However, the problem actually said to do it as a decimal rounded to four decimal places, so we didn't have to reduce, but since it was so easy, I did. What we really need to do is, is either divide 6 by 32 or 3 by 16 to get 0 0.1875. So if you threw a dart at that entire area, the probability of hitting that blue shaded area to four decimal places would be 0 0.1875. Same sort of problem, but the dartboard is a different shape this time. It says if a dart is thrown and hits somewhere in the figure below, and it's basically built from four different size squares. There are two blue squares and two green squares, and they sort of sit on top of each other. What is the probability that it hits the green area? And they want this time the answer to be written as an, either an integer or a simplified fraction, not a decimal. The idea is exactly the same as before which is the probability of hitting a region is proportional to the area of that region in the whole diagram, the mechanics of finding that is going to be a little different. We'll do just as, it, as we did in the last problem we worked with the dartboard and calculate the area of the entire region. So I can just get rid of all the distractions. The entire region consists of simply a 21 by 21 square. 
and 21 times 21 is 441. So the area of the entire region is 441. And I've got to compare that to the green region. So what I want now is the area of the green region. There's more than one way to do this, but what I would suggest is take their hints. They said this thing is built from four different size squares. So you could actually think about taking this thing apart. If I just pulled out, we're looking for the area of the green region. If I, if I just pulled out the biggest green square, it's this one right here that corresponds to the 15 by 15. That's the biggest green. If I just pull it out and look at it, I'll call it the largest green here. I can see that the answer for the area is going to be 15 times 15. But part of that green is covered up by the blue. So on top of this green, there sits a blue square, which is 9 by 9. So it pops right on top of it. If I pull that 9 by 9 blue square out and put it on top, I need to subtract its area from the green because that's, that's covered up. The area under that blue now is not part of the green area that I can see. So I need to subtract off the area of that smaller blue square, which is 9 by 9. And then lastly, this little 6 by 6 green square gets popped on top of the blue, and it adds some more green area. So I started off with a large green area. It got covered up by some blue, so I had to subtract that off. But then some green went on top of the blue and added some more green area. Well, again, that smaller green rectangle is 6 by 6. All I need to do is find the area of the large green rectangle, the small blue rectangle, and the small green rectangle. The two greens get added. The blue gets taken away. And I know that 15 times 15 is 225. Not your calculator will tell you. 9 times 9 is 81, but it's subtracted. And 6 times 6 is 36. And 225 minus 81 plus 36 is 180. So what I've found now is that the area of the green region is 180. The area of the entire region is 441. And by the basic probability principle, and actually by the hint, the probability that your dart hits green is the area of green showing divided by the total area. We calculated the area of green showing to be 180. We calculated the total area to be 441. And this time, they want this written as a fraction or an integer, not a decimal. So we have to address the simplification process. We know they want a fraction, but we also know that they want a completely reduced fraction. Luckily, 180 and 441 aren't too terribly large, so I will feel pretty confident that I can factor that without a lot of struggle. But let's address that now. I need to get this fraction reduced. When the numbers aren't really very large, my usual strategy is just to start with the primes. 2, then 3, then 5, 7, 11, 13, and keep going till I can assure myself that I've completely factored everything. So I'll just take 180 and try to factor it into its prime factorization. I'll take 441 and do the same. And then I'll divide out any common factors, and what I'm left with will be the final reduced answer. So let's do that. If I take 180 over 441, let's take the numerator first. I know 180 is even, so it'll divide by 2, and if I divide that, I get 90, so 180 is 90 times 2. But 90 is also an even number, so it'll divide by 2 again. So 90 is 45 times 2. 45 won't divide by 2, so I bump up to 3. Try 3. Well, 3 does go into 45 15 times, so 45 is 15 times 3. And 15 will divide by 3 again and come out to be 5 times 3. So I end up with 180 being 5 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 2. Now I want to go back and do the same thing with 441 that I did with 180. I notice that 441 is odd, so it will not divide by 2. 
So I bump up to my next prime, which is 3, try to my calculator and find out that 441 is 147 times 3. Again, 147 is not even, so it won't divide by 2, but it might divide by 3. I try it, and it does. It turns out that 147 is 49 times 3. 49, of course, is 7 times 7, and that's a prime factorization of the denominator. So what I end up with is a pair of 3's in the numerator that will divide out with a pair of 3's in the denominator. And nothing else will divide out, so I end up with 5 times 2 times 2 in the numerator and 7 times 7 in the denominator, and that is 20 over 49, and that's completely reduced. So the probability that the dart lands in the green area is 20 49s.